Hey guys, it's Anya and welcome to a back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be taking personality quizzes. I'm going to be taking the Myers-Briggs Enneagram test, Big Five, and what Harry Potter character am I? Because I already know my Hogwarts house and I took it on the official Pottermore test and I don't want to take like a BuzzFeed quiz or something else because it's not going to be accurate and I know it. I'm a Gryffindor by the way. If you wanted to know, I'm not even just saying I'm a Gryffindor, like I always wanted to be a Slytherin, but I'm a Gryffindor. I guess, I guess I'm more courageous than I am cunning, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense, but I'm actually pretty excited. I've taken Myers-Briggs and Enneagram before. Myers-Briggs, I honestly don't remember at all. And for the Enneagram test, I took it twice and it should stay the same forever because it's supposed to be like your childhood or whatever but i feel like i got a four once and a three the other time so i don't know maybe i got a four both times but i'm excited to see this i saw chris huey did this a few months ago honestly and i thought it was really interesting so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna start with myers briggs because like everybody knows what that is um i'm taking it on 16 personalities is the website you make new friends you regularly make new friends well it's corona so no and i don't think i really did that regularly before it's like whenever i meet somebody i'm gonna say i don't know i don't know this is you spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest honestly yeah seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry yes i'm a crier i cry i'm emotional you have to make a backup plan for a backup plan. It depends what. I feel like I always have multiple possibilities, but I never like think of them as a backup plan. But sure. You can usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. Outwardly, very much so. At social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself. You mostly talk to the ones you already know. I'd say I try to talk to people. I don't know if I would start a conversation, but I will engage in a conversation. You prefer to completely finish one project before starting another. 100%. You're very sentimental. <sighs> kind of. Kind of. You usually like organizing tools like schedules and lists 100%. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. Yes. Y yeah. Yeah. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Definitely not. Like if I see somebody cool on the street, I will not talk to them. No. I'm. No. We're not, we're not about that. You are too interested in discussing various interpretations and analysis of creative works. Oh yeah, I like, ana I was about to say analyzing. I like analyzing stuff and talking about like tweaking and like changing and yeah, what it said. You are more inclined to follow your head than your heart. I listen to my heart, but I'll also listen to my head and be like, mm, that's kind of the smartest. It depends situation to situation. There's head, heart, and gut. It really depends on the situation, so I'll put it in the middle. You usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning a particular daily routine. I like routine, but I don't always stick to them, so I'll put it there. You rarely worry about whether you made a good impression. Oh, disagree. I worry about that a lot. <laughs> you enjoy participating in group activities. I like team sports, but I like being by myself and group projects are the bane of my existence. You like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. No, no. I will interpret the ending by myself if, but and continue on, but literally any type of ending. I hate, I love reading. If you haven't seen my past two videos, I hate endings of anything. I love reading, but I hate endings because they make me so sad that I'm done. Definitely not. Your happiness comes more from helping others accomplish things than your own accomplishments. Agree-ish. You are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. Yeah. You're prone to worrying about things that will take a turn for the worse. That will or I think they will. Or you're prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. I don't say I'm a pessimist. No. No. You avoid leadership roles in group settings. No, I like being the leader. You're definitely not an artistic type of person. Maybe not drawing, but I am very artistic. Look at my guitars. Look at my guitars. I mean, that could mean nothing, but I, 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 I am a creative. You think the world would be a better place if people relied more on rationality and less on their feelings. Would the world, would the world as a whole be a better place? Yes. Would society be a better place? 
this. So I'm going to hit it at this. Feelings are a big part of people and not having feelings would literally make life so boring but would the world as a whole be better? Yes, because like greed would not be a thing and like selfishness. You prefer to do chores before allowing yourself to relax. Yeah, because if I relax without doing stuff, I'm not going to be relaxing and constantly thinking about the fact that I need to do that. You enjoy watching people argue no. You tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. I make a YouTube channel. But at the same time, I hate being the center of attention. Your mood can change very quickly. I would say yes. You often end up doing things at the last possible moment. Hey, this, I have four videos filmed now. So now, but at the same time, I skipped an upload like two weeks ago. It really depends my headspace. You have always been fascinated by the question of what if anything happens after death. I try not to think about it because it can really go any way, so no. You usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. I'm an individual, but I like being around. I like having somebody in the room, maybe. I'll put it like here. You find it very easy to empathize with a person who experiences are very different from yours. Yeah, I am pathetic. You rarely second guess the choices you have made. I second guess myself. After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is just what you need. Heck to the no. Definitely not a lively social event. I would need some time by myself and then some time with like one or two people max that I can like chill with, but not a lively social event. So heck to the no. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Definitely disagree. You have a to-do list for each day. You rarely feel insecure. Recently, less. I, I think I like myself. You avoid making phone calls. I like phone calls, but I'm scared of calling people. I don't FaceTime or call people. I let people call or FaceTime me. I think about doing it, but I'm like, yeah. You spend a lot of time trying to understand views that are very different from your own. Yeah. If your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as possible. Yeah. You rarely contemplate the reason for human existence or the meaning of life. Yeah. I mean, evolution. It happened. Your emotions control you more than you control them. Okay, here's the thing. I feel like my emotions control me, but outwardly I am very put together. So a solid middle. You take great care not to make people look bad even when it's completely their fault. If somebody's not pulling their weight on a school assignment and I know they're literally just sitting there like doing nothing, we'll call them out on it. I try to help people out as much as I can. So this is a weird question for me. Greeish. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organizing consistent efforts. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. Mm, I didn't know that people thought highly of me, so. No? You would have a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. Here's the thing I want to be a lawyer, which I feel like you do a lot of alone work, but then when you do the main showcase of your work you're with a lot of people but like your work is your own so yes you believe that pondering abstract philosophical philosophical questions is a waste of time no i think it's fun and random and a great way to fill time you feel more drawn to places with busy bustling atmosphere than quiet intimate places like city wise yes you know at a first glance how someone is feeling kind of you often feel overwhelmed yes you complete things methodically without skipping over any steps. If I can skip a th step to make it faster and better, I'll do it. I don't, I really don't know. You're very intrigued by things labeled as controversial. Ooh, yes. You would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. Yeah. You struggle with deadlines. No. You feel confident that things will work out for you. Yeah. Oh my god. I am an advocate. That's, I think that's what I got my first time. I N F T. INFJT. So I stands for introvert, I believe. So um, my mind is mainly introverted, but it's like kind of in the middle. And we've got energy is quite intuitive. I think I'm intuitive and observant. Like I feel like those go hand in hand. Like I can like see something, which is the observation part, and then be like, yes, which is the intuitive part, you know? I don't know if that made sense, but it does for me. <laughs> Nature. I'm more of a feeler. Yeah tactics judging or prospecting 
Oh. Yeah, if you're my friend, you know. I do judge. Okay. Um, it's true. Identity turbulent? What is that? Turbulent versus sort of... I don't even know what that means, but go for it. Okay. An advocate. That's, that's cool, because I want to be a lawyer. And... Those are interchangeable. Do, 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 do. Advocates generally strive to do what's right. They want to help create a world where others do the right thing as well. People with this personality type may feel called to use their strengths, including creativity, imagination, and sensitivity, to uplift others and spread compassion. We're gonna take the Enneagram personality test. So I'm excited for this. I like the Myers-Briggs the most, I think. I've never taken the big five, though. It's important for me that other people like me. I don't really care if other people like me. Not anymore, at least. I used to be such a people pleaser, but it is important to me to achieve great things. Great in what sense? Because I think the word, like, success is very different for very many people. But yes, but not in the way of like, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire, or, oh, I'm going to change the world, I'm going to cure Ebola or whatever, you know. Mm. Not in that way. I make more significant contributions than the average person. I'm 16 years old, what contribution can I make? I don't know. Neutral? I don't... Maybe. I feel my emotions very deeply, yes. I have a sense that other people will never truly understand me, 100%. It's important to me to avoid pain and suffering at all times. No. I seek out experiences that I know will make me feel happy or excited. I see the positive in every situation. I don't think I'm optimistic or pessimistic. I think I'm realistic, but not in a pessimistic way. And I will be outwardly optimistic in some situations. Like, am I just thinking on the bright side? Okay, I hate that saying, but like, I, I, I don't know. I let other people make the decisions. No. I'm very hands-on. I don't fit in with- I'm not like other girls. There's rarely a good reason for changing how things are done. No. I hate the saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. You can always better stuff. And half the time things are broken, but you just don't even notice. Like, climate change. <sighs> I feel like my brain always goes back to climate change. That's cool. I always finish my chores. My dad would say no, so I'm gonna- I'm always trying to be a better person. Yeah. I often feel overtaken by my emotions. Yes. I avoid situations that bring up negative feelings. Loki feel like I go into bad situations. I am good at seeing the bright side when others complain. When others complain, yes. I do not hesitate to call people out when they are behaving badly. Facts. I seek out relationships that offer me some type of protection. No. And just like you're cool, let's be friends. I want people to admire me. I don't give a rat's booty. If I'm honest, I feel that I'm a bit better than other people. <laughs> if I'm honest. Ooh. Halfway done. I make plans for many years into the future. I like having an idea, but I don't like planning the future because I feel like that means like if something doesn't occur to that plan that it's wrong when that's not the case. I read books that help me be more productive or better at what I do. I hate self-help books. No sir. I'm an important member of my social groups. Once again, I sure hope so. I can describe my emotions in a lot of depth and detail. I don't talk about my emotions. I can describe other people's emotions in a lot of depth and detail. I have many ways of avoiding situations that get me down. I don't actually think that I avoid situations that make me sad or down. I think I go into them and I try to get through the other side. I push myself to succeed, but not past the breaking point. Other people have stronger opinions than I do. No, I am very opinionated and very passionately opinionated. <laughs> I don't get a three or four. I'm going to be like, what? I'm going to be so confused. An eight. <laughs> but my second highest is a four. Okay. In a nutshell, eights are motivated by the desire to be independent and take charge of themselves and others. They are assertive personalities and passionate about life, which they approach with vigor and confidence. Eights know how to look after themselves. They pursue their own destiny. I would say that's, that's pretty freaking true. It just said that I had an error saving my screen recording, so that's annoying. I really hope that it worked. If not, you guys like heard most of the questions and most of the answers kind of. But let's go on to the big five personality test. I have 
a kind word for everyone. Not everyone, almost everyone, but there are definitely people that I have strong opinions that I have no kind words for, so I will be saying that's inaccurate just for their sake. I feel like I'm better than other people. <laughs> Not all other people, but definitely some other people. I think I'm better than serial killers. I'm gonna say it. maybe that's, maybe, maybe I'm really putting myself out there and being like, wow, I'm all full of myself, but I think I'm better than a serial killer, so. I avoid taking on a lot of responsibility. That's inaccurate. I feel like I take on a lot too much sometimes. There are many things that I do not like about myself. Not anymore. It's called self-confidence. Self-confidence is key and it takes so long, but I think I'm looking really good today. I've been thinking about that for this entire day and I just decided I will allow you guys to know that I think that today. I'm the life of the party, whoop whoop, absolutely not, <laughs> no. I criticize other people. Yeah, but not in like, I'm criticized, like, well, I, I said I'm judgmental like a few minutes ago, so, yeah. I do not like art. Oof, anybody who says completely accurate, we can't be friends. I feel like I have a lot to say, but I don't always talk a lot, which is weird because I do have a YouTube channel, but I'm not put it that kind of soft-hearted. Okay, I am empathetic. I will also give you the truth. Where does that right in the dead middle but not neutral in the sense that i don't have an opinion neutral in the sense that uh, you know reserved yes how do you think your personality has affected your career success i'm 16 years old let's get ourselves a score openness 92 percent it describes a person's tendency to think in abstract complex ways high scores tend to be creative adventurous and intellectual consciousness i would call that high to medium high scores are organized and determined and are able to forego immediate gratification for the sake of long-term achievement Ex extroversion <laughs> yeah definitely low yeah because i as the myers briggs said i'm an introvert which i believe agreeableness what did i get uh 58 i would put that at low but it's more than 50 so high People who are high on agreeableness experience a great deal of empathy and tend to get pleasure out of serving and taking care of others. Okay, I'm empathetic, like I said earlier, but like, I also will be blunt, so. Neuroticism. It describes a person's tendency to experience negative emotions, including fear, sadness, anxiety, guilt, and shame. I don't think fear and anxiety are negative emotions or guilt. But all right, this circumplex describes the essential role to take in approaching the world. Okay, empathetic idealist uses insight and creativity to help others think about how the world could be a better and more beautiful place. So that's my biggest. And last but certainly not least, let's hit up the witch. Harry Potter character am I? Harry, Harry Potter. Pick a movie, The Parent Trap. Which object do you most desire? Elder Wand, Philosopher's Stone, Mirror of Erised, a Firebolt, Marauder's Map, a Deluminator, a Resurrection Stone, a Cloak of Invisibility, a TV. A TV? Firebolt or Cloak of Invisibility? Like, I feel like Cloak of Invisibility is so much cooler, but like a Firebolt. I have to say Cloak of Invisibility because, I don't know, man, like, you cannot. I feel like if I said Firebolt, it would be Jenny. But at the same time, if this is based on the movies, it would not be Jenny. What is your favorite food from these fish and chips? Pick a drink. Why Why isn't butterbeer one of these? Butterbeer would be my choice. Butterbeer is so good. Tea. I'm not old enough to drink alcohol. Um, Stairway to Heaven. Where would you like to hang out? Ooh, definitely not Madame Puddyfoot's tea shop. Bad memories from the books. I don't like Cho Chang. This is so difficult. Because the Shrieking Shack would be so cool to just like sit in there with your friends because like nobody else would be in there but like i feel like it'd be cold and like apart from like being like alone like there's nothing really to do there quality quidditch supplies that would be so cool but i would want to blow my money so not the best wizards we, we <laughs> weezies wizard wheezies i would also want to blow my money but i feel like you can like play around with stuff without blowing your money in there too and you can talk to fred and george weasley this is pre-death how would you spend your ideal weekend murdering Miss Umbridge right here in this picture. In bed with a book. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, in bed with a book. Sounds about right. Your ideal partner is someone who doesn't exist. I'm comfortable with or gives me space. Well, ideally, 
it's all of these like apart from doesn't exist. I want to be comfortable with them when I'm with them. Yeah, sure. Pick a potion. Felix Felix Felicis. I literally have a sticky note by my bed that says Felix Felicis. Just for funsies. I'm not a magazine person, but let's say Rolling Stone because why the heck not? Pick a magical creature. Ooh, a Crumplehorn Snorgak. Is a poltergeist a creature technically? Mm, this is hard. Is it a phoenix or is it a hippogriff? I feel like I could ride a hippogriff, but like at the same time I could technically, I could be carried by a phoenix. But like phoenixes like burn, they're cool. Okay. Owls aren't magical, just to let you know. Buzzfeed. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say phoenix. Pick a TV show. Girls, Game of Thrones, Dexter, and da, 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 da. Like I haven't really watched any of these. Sherlock. I got Neville Longbottom. I'm awkward and clumsy apparently and I hate being the center of attention, but you're brave and big hearted and people can always trust you to help them out in a bad situation. Okay, that actually does make sense. I love Neville, but like I was just surprised. Glad I got a Gryffindor. Thank you so much for watching my video. This was actually really fun. To recap, I am an INFJ T, so I'm an advocate. I'm an eight apparently, which like what? what the big five my highest one was openness though which is funny because i did say many times that i don't open up but like the definition of openness apparently is not being able to be open so whatever and i'm never long bottom which i vibe with so hard love my baby boy that was really fun and i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and comment down like what your results for any of these are because i feel like these are fun to like talk about. So yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.